Hello New Angeles and welcome to the Rosenheim City Grid. This is Shorty, like most times and uh, today we have a very special edition. We're gonna do a little bit of podcast, shoutcast, discussion about the upcoming lockdown number 11 event. And today I brought a little bit of support. So this is not gonna be... Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna do this on my own. So, first of all, I brought two experienced lockdown players. First of all, I brought Armin Firecracker. Yes, hello. And we brought also Dunsch97. Hi, Dunsch. Hi. And nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining me both on this uh, late time in the day. And um, what would be a discussion about lockdown if we won't uh, invite the Let's call him the mastermind behind all the lockdown format. Hello, Vespa. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining me. Um, yeah, so what is all this about? So lockdown number 11, the event is coming up on uh, Sunday. That's in two days from now. If you don't know anything about lockdown yet, um, I can only tell you you might want to check the link down in the description below i will link um, the event from always be running every information and pretty much all the rulings are um, there you might want to check this first because otherwise you might don't know what we are talking about first of all before we go into the lockdown theme um, How's net running lately? Do you play lately? Recently? Um, actually, I stopped playing after the Worlds tournament because there were almost no tournaments anymore. And I was not so keen about playing the Salvage Memories card pool because I know those cards and I know those cards are pretty good and I don't want to play against them more or less. Uh, so I had a break from Netrunner more or less, but I'm really keen about uh, playing again. I'm actually playing re really uh, regularly at the moment, so five to ten games to, uh, per week. And I started playing on uh, Ritiki.net, so the clone of uh, Gentiki with the Red Runner. And we have a league there, and we try to have fun with the changed cards. No, oh, that's cool. Vespa, how's yeah. about you? Do yeah, you play? I've been, I've, I've actually, well, I've been playing very casually with a friend over JNet because playing in person is a bit hard. It became quite hard since last March, right? So, mm. it, depending on where you are. But I've been playing just very casually. I did actually play in at Worlds, uh, and I came 200 or no 198 out of 200 something people, which was loads of fun. And I do still love the game. I haven't had too much time to play, or not time, but like chances to play Salvage Memories. Uh, and I think I agree. Like the cards are great, but we know them. So I'm really eager to get back into the game, kind of full time, in a way when Gateway hits the tables or, or Janet as well. So I'm waiting for Gateway, but I'm playing, you know, just to not forget what clicks do and what, what uh, credits do. So that's definitely there. <laughs> I, I, I mostly agree. I also play, play um, yeah, well, Janet, Janet exclusi exclusively because there is no other opportunity to play in person, which is very sad, but while well, we were coming back to this, but yeah, um, I also not too keen about salvage memory. I think I talked in the in quite some other videos about this, and yeah, well, it was fun for a week. But um, if you're playing 10 games on Jinteki at night and you play nine times the RP prison deck, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So Vespa, lockdown number 11 is coming up. You might want to talk a little about a little bit about when it is, how to join. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, if you go to always be running, there's a page for this, and I always put all the events I open up for everybody online because I mostly organize things online. 
uh, on ABR. So alwaysberunning.net is the place to go if you see lockdown number 11 there. This one has a has a subtitle which is Oh No More Lockdown, which is named after the Lemmings game. If anybody remembers the 90s and Psygnosis, a company that made games for Amigas and whatnot. Well, anyway, <clears throat> enough about Lemmings. <laughs> You can register on, uh, on through the through ABR, but only using uh, actually it's a Google Docs form. So the thing is, I would be looking at the registration that people put in uh, on ABR because you can of course register through ABR for different things. But the thing is, with lockdown, the format is kind of custom. You actually have to answer some questions for me and. Uh, and drop a few more details than ABR is supporting right now. So Necro and the crew behind ABR did an amazing job and the tool is amazing, the platform is amazing for events. Uh, but uh, I needed to have a bit of an extra and a form. So there is a registration form, you can click through to that form. I'm not going to give you the link because it's just monstrous, but it is on the on the ABR page. And basically you just, you just have to register there if you um, if you meet the requirements for the ter for the format and for this particular uh, 11th edition, which, uh, well, apart from the standard ban list, which is always the, the ban list sort of to observe for everybody in standard, there's a bunch of cards that this time, I for the 11th one, I decided to choose myself based on some cards I've seen before and some personal kind of hatreds, <laughs> small pet peeves, I would say. But usually it's the players of the different editions, the winners of the previous editions, who get to decide what cards are going to be banned. This time I just said, okay, we're starting a season two because season one was one to ten. This is eleven to twenty will be season two. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what could I, what you know, what could I ban? And if you want, we can talk more about the bans. But this one is basically about all, all about scarcity, and I don't mean scarcity of resources, but I just mean there will be very little money in the game. That's the idea here. Yeah, we will absolutely talk about the new ban list. I also realized you, this time, this is the first time you introduced a secondary tiebreaker mechanic. Yeah, so this is something, this is like an experiment. Uh, and I've been chatting with a bunch of different people who are interested in the format or, or uh, coming up with more ideas. And trust me, the people who are playing this regularly, and we have a few of them here in the room, <laughs> but basically... Uh, People get really into this and they are very excited about playing it and, and tweaking it or, or coming up with some cool ideas. And I'm super grateful for that because for me, I wanted to do something with the folks who play the game so that everybody can enjoy it. And I'm not even participating in this. So for me, it's more fun to organize and I love tweaking things. That's why the format is changing from edition to edition. This time, uh, it's an experiment. And again, I don't know if people are going to do this or not. Uh, but basically, yeah, uh, if you don't use all the influence points that your ID has, if you don't play whole play sets, so usually the, the standard play set in Netrunner is three cards, of, of three copies of the same card. If you play only two for all the different cards you have in your deck, uh, and of course some cards are only one per deck, some cards are up to six per deck, so again, if you use incomplete play sets of one per deck, that means zero, but for six per deck, it's five, for example, or fewer. And then also you don't have any neutral cards. And this, and this is going to be a bit of a shout out again. Uh, the first lockdown when it happened, I had the idea to do something because of course the pandemic hit, we couldn't play in person events. It was like, oh. and then I was thinking, okay, what can I organize online that would make sense, but would be a bit different than everything else. And then thanks to the Czech crew. So huge shout outs to Longi, Krasti, all the folks from the Czech meta. And thanks to Captain Nice's uh, diversified portfolio uh, and Captain Nice, they're like one of the kind of founding parents of this, you know, like the, one of the founding people behind this format in a way, uh, inadvertently, because I just, I created this or I came up with this idea on my own in a way, but I, I stand on the shoulder of giants. So Captain Nice is one of the giants. Uh, the idea was basically to yeah do something different, which is going to squeeze or, or going, kind of going to limit the meta a lot and help people experiment with IDs that are not that popular. So diversified portfolio was perfect for this. And then uh, 
I saw, I, I was actually streaming the uh, a tournament organized by Long Game Krusty, which was the Versailles portfolio. I was like, this is the thing, but I want to change it. And some limitations came in and so on and so forth. So this experiment, again, it might only happen for this edition and for no other edition, but I think it's going to be an interesting tiebreaker as an extra thing. So, I don't know, what, what do you think about it? Like, how does it sound? I, I'm a little bit confused still. I was reading, uh, I was reading the passage uh, with the secondary tiebreaker quite a few times. I still didn't understand um, if I used it. So my ID score will be downgraded. I, when will when will this be used? When will the secondary tiebreaker hits? When will okay, it yeah, be triggered? Good question. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point to make and a very good question. And I I think. In the future, I'm going to put like examples, you know, like in any good manual for a game, which is already complex, you have examples saying, this is what happens, blah, 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 blah. And then people are like, ah, okay. So anyway, in this case, the idea is basically what happens in lockdown is the first tiebreaker is not your strength of schedule, but we look at the points you use to create your uh, combination of decks. So uh, as anybody who played Lockdown before might know already, but for people who haven't heard about it yet, basically all the IDs in the game, so the Corp IDs and the Runner IDs, have assigned point values. And you kind of buy them for points, and you can, you can spend up to 10 points. The, the thing is, the fewer points you spend, the better for you, because this is the primary tiebreaker. So the, the cheaper IDs are basically the ones that are not that powerful, not that popular, they don't have that many tricks up their sleeve. And this is where, for example, if you play with a combination of IDs that it's like two points, and then somebody else has a combination of IDs that is, for example, three points, and they have the same strength of schedule, the same points, you actually will be ranked higher than they are. So playing harder to win with decks, in a way, or IDs, Uh, gives you a bit of an edge, a bit of an advantage. And the thing is, with those extra experiment kind of uh, conditions, the restrictions, if you add on top of that, uh, yeah, if you don't use all your influence points, or if you don't use all the cards uh, that you could, so you don't have full playsets in the whole deck, and if you don't have any neutral cards, all those things are going to add to kind of decrease your score a bit as well. So you're going to be more competitive against other people. So again, for example, if your ID combination has five points and you meet two of those restrictions, for example, or two of those uh, challenges in a way, and another person has, again, five points with their ID combination and they only used one restriction or none, you're going to be ranked higher in Swiss. So, uh, so sorry, Swiss, this is only Swiss. <laughs> But like, yeah, you're, you're going to rank higher basically uh, uh, on, the, on the scoring. If you have the same amount of points. Exactly. For the if have, games. Exactly. If you have the same amount of points, this okay. is going to be a part of the tiebreaker. So it's not going to be higher. It's not going to be more important than the, your ID score, but it's going to improve your ID score against other people. Did you um, get... <clears throat> uh, sorry, Armin. Just go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to talk about it, uh, but um... yeah, yeah, I still have a question. Vespa, do yeah. you came up with this um, because you were encountering some issues with the secondary tiebreaker, which was the strength of schedule, I think, before, or did you came up with this just to um, encourage people to do more creative deck building? This is the it's it's the latter thing. So it's clearly an experiment, and it's clearly just to ex exactly to encourage people to go like, hey, wait a minute, maybe I can push myself a bit harder. And this is again squeezing the meta a bit more and just saying, okay, I'm not going to use all my ID uh, sorry influence points, or I'm not going to play three copies of this card and three copies of that card, and you know. So it's all about making sure that uh, people ha are having more fun with it. But I know that it's restrictive, so that's why it's optional. Like, it's completely for those people who are just want to go one step further. I like the idea. I, I really like the idea. I think um, the difference between the three options you have is uh, quite big. I think not using the maximum allowed influence points is quite easy for some decks. I think it, it doesn't matter if I have one spare or ten spare influence, I'm guessing. I think this mm -hmm. is quite easy to achieve, I think. Yeah. Um, the ones with any neutral cards and only incomplete playsets is a lot tougher, I think. It's really tough. <laughs> so that means that you tried building decks, huh? <laughs> uh, actually, I was looking on the banned card list and there's so many cards banned, like agendas, 
breakers and money. I was like, how can I build a deck like this? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try, no. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, well, you will see how many people will use it, if it will be used. Uh, what, exactly, exactly. Uh, how, 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 how good this will work out. I'm guessing if I don't use any of these optional secondary tiebreakers, it will be still the strength of schedule deciding? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, this is just going to improve, so it's going to change a bit the ID score. And I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be like, how to put it, it's kind of like, uh, maybe like, a, oof, trying to think about name it correctly but i didn't come up with a good name for it uh, when i was writing the descriptions i was like okay i'm just going to do it behind the scenes so to speak but basically your id score will be the same and then you're going to have like stars so for using each one of those restrictions you're going to get a star so a person with five id points and two stars is going to score higher than a person with five id points and one star basically more or less I like the idea. What what are you guys thinking? Do you think about including handicapping yourself even more in the format? Uh, I have a deck with two of these handicaps in it. Oh, wow. And the other one I'm thinking about playing has one. So I think I have three stars in the end if I choose these two decks. Yep. Um, but I would find it more interesting if you go in and don't do that. It's another story. Um, just make four rules, more or less, mm -hmm. two that um, put you the uh, ID cost of the uh, ID up. For example, you want two that allow, will lower it. For example, you play mm -hmm. want to play Titan, mm -hmm. and you go in and put the two that lowers your ID score, and then you have a Titan with an ID score of eight instead of ten. Ah, right. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's a very good idea. I mean, that's that's something that probably, I mean, th thank you so much for this idea, because this is exactly how the format kind of evolves and people giving their input is what makes it so much fun. Uh, there is this whole thing of, of trying to, to see how it can be tweaked, because I am not a game designer. I'm not a format designer. You know, I just have fun with this. And anytime people come up with good ideas and they say, hey, we could do this, I'm like, yes, let's do this. But I would never be the one saying, for example, oh, yeah, I calculated everything because I'm not that kind of person. But yeah, this sounds great. This is actually the first thing I thought of when I, when I read this over. And then I read this a second time. That, oh, doesn't it uh, do what I think it does? <laughs> <laughs> so don't you have to write it down and send it to me and then we're going to make Lockdown 12 with this because it sounds like a good idea. I mean, you know, I would love to incorporate people's ideas. This format is as open as any custom format usually is. I mean, we've seen quite a lot of custom formats around. There's Throwback, there's Ocarina, which is just wild. And, you know, fun. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. Like, it, I was super excited about Ocarina. I was like, wow, I'm not playing this, but even watching this is so much fun because it's it just not box standard Netrunner. It was hard playing. <laughs> <laughs> to get used to all the different ideas that you never yeah, played absolutely. against. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That's why I love those alternative formats so much because if you play a lot of standard format, Uh, this is a very welcome, very welcome, different meta, especially the lockdown. I think it's very interesting because it rewards you so much for doing some creative deck building. You are nearly unable to, to net deck any deck and it's evolving each time. Each lockdown is different from the the one before because you have a different ban list and the deck that might be one lockdown 11, let's say, might be totally uh, totally outpaced uh, at lockdown 12 or something like that or just not working because some cards are banned and I, I love this one, especially in a living card game. I love it. Yeah, that's also the reason I really like lockdown. Because you're always encouraged to build new decks and tweak around things and try out stuff. Yeah, some of the things I've seen, you know, over time, uh, like you just said, it, it all changes because people vote for different things, people choose different things. 
And then we have people just jumping in. And this is another thing I'm super proud about. I love the community for this. There's a, pe there's a bunch of people from all the different metas around the world playing. We have people playing from South Korea, New Zealand, uh, you know, the Americas, Europe, like, it's just, and I'm like, okay, I'm organizing it at a time that's more or less convenient for me, but people are just getting up at like two o'clock in the morning to play, and I'm like, wow, okay, I mean, that's dedication. And they come up with really great ideas and the creativity and kind of facing the challenges. I think this is something, now I'm going to kind of zoom out of, of, of lockdown. And, you know, because I was thinking about it a lot, and I was, I realized that this community, like Netrunner players, we like challenges, we like adversity, we like somebody, you know, throwing down some rules and saying, this is what's gonna happen. And we're like, oh, okay, we have to work with this because this is what, let's be honest, Netrunner in its standard format, you know, FFG era, Nisei era, whatever, it is a demanding game and you already have to really get into this and it is an investment of your mental powers and, you know, like you really have, if you want to, enjoy the game it takes time it takes energy and a lot of people playing it are really into it and it's a challenge to to get into it's not an easy game to explain for example or to play and then when you have the meta changing uh, it's a challenge as well and people in this community i think in netrunner players we like a challenge we're like you know draft of course i'm gonna get random cards i'm gonna win or i'm gonna have fun and i think the 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 biggest prize we all get from this is the fun and then of course if somebody wins or uh, it's always a reason to celebrate but i think this is why there's such a camaraderie in the community and why people are so friendly because we all know that we are being challenged by the game and the custom formats are challenging us even more it's like you know oh okay yeah i i we all know you know the game, but how about BAM? Or how about BAM? And you're like, oof, okay, well, let's try. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, I, I did this myself with, with standard events where it's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what am I going to play? Okay, let's, let's, you know, let's come up with some weird idea. And of course, I come like last or whatever. And I don't really care about scores. I'm not very competitive, but at least I tried. And meeting the challenges would really, really drives me in this game and what makes it fun. So I'm really grateful to all the people around lockdown who are like, you know, coming back and back again, like, you know, just to challenge themselves and to see how much fun they can squeeze out of the game because it's what it should be. I, I guess it's just all about fun. Absolutely. I think the Netrunner community is a one of a kind. And the people are so insanely, I don't know what to say, adaptive. You can throw any bun list, any restriction at them and it won't take more than a few days until one of the players came up with such a crazy idea for a deck or a new new combination of cards and this is happening since years and, and all the time I'm like, it's it's just crazy, it's really just crazy. I don't know how how adaptive other communities of card games are. But I don't think it's it's not the case. I think this is a one of a kind at Netrunner, and people are having fun with this. So every time there is a new deck, it may be broken. Some will call it broken, other will love it. Uh, it totally depends. But if you think about all those different kind of decks we've seen over the years, it's just amazing. Really, just amazing. Also for lockdown, I'm. I think I'm trying at least to play on Sunday. I think it's the fourth time playing lockdown, but I'm uh, watching watching all all the commentary of you, Vespa. Pretty much every video, every tournament, and it's always so much fun to see what kind of decks people came up with. Especially the the big the big names you said before. They always came up with great decks and always different decks. Exactly. I mean, the, the the part the the part of the pleasure of this meta is basically, yeah, you, you like you said earlier on, you cannot come with the same deck to every tournament because it will just not be legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, any questions anymore for the secondary tiebreaker or anything you want to discuss about? Yeah, I, I really like the idea of them. And actually, Vesper, what do you think about just making those rules mandatory for lockdown number 12? Or like one of the rules? Why not? So I think, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a, 
<laughs> because if I have a really bad deck with like no neutral cards, only shitty cards, and only two copy of them, I would be happy to play against someone who has the same shitty deck. <laughs> I think so, Armin. I think this is gonna be an interesting idea to figure out. But as you know, like uh, what happened over the course of the first season, like the first ten tournaments. I realized that this format can be so many different things, but I don't want to be the only person kind of deciding, or I, I don't really have the brain to just say, this would be cool, or that would be cool. And all good things in communities are usually, uh, they, they usually come up with, from changing ide exchanging ideas, people, you know, different people meeting and saying, hey, how about this, how about that? So there's this thing called the Lockdown Council, which is basically all the people from the top four uh, of each of the previous lockdowns, and I think I'm going to send because I was going to, but then life got in the way. Uh, but I'm going to send a proposal or like an idea, and people usually are very responsive and they, they share their opinions and they're brutally honest as well because you know it's it's not like we're creating something I don't know we're, we're not creating here the standard meta we're just having fun with this. So people are either very enthusiastic or they're very careful about things or they have very honest thoughts and this is what helps me shape this format and it's it's all big fun and, uh, and it's it's a big 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 experiment so uh may, yeah maybe lockdown 12 is going to have some restrictive rules however to take a step back or two or five uh i think uh so standard is a great format that people can get into play and it's kind of safe and secure and people you know you can find good decks for it easily you can chat with everybody about it and everybody will have opinions it's really great to be a part of in a way all the other custom formats or kind of more niche formats like you know there's only so many people who play eternal for example uh, uh, but still it's there so you can definitely play it but I'm thinking if lockdown becomes a bit too restrictive it might be a bit too scary for people to try out but then again I don't know maybe it's going to actually be more attractive because people are like oh you cannot play all those power cards and then the players who have more experience with the game than me for example they're going to put some extra i'm going to borrow a term from uh oh, what's the name of the game oh, the other richard garfield game well never mind but there, there's this thing where you can restrict your deck with chains right so we kind of i don't remember the name of the game <laughs> terrible keyforge keyforge thank yes, you so much thank you yeah i, I played <laughs> thank you so much. I played Keyforge two times in my life, and I was just like, uh, okay, so the decks are random, so how the hell am I supposed to enjoy it? But anyway, I mean, it's not about the game. It's It has this chain kind of mechanic, which is really cool, because you just handicap your deck. You, if your deck is too good, it gets handicapped. And I, f I like this idea, but I want this handicapping to happen in kind of an organic way, or if people just say, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play against you but I'm not going to be using any of this, any of this, any of this. So, of course, there are already restrictions in lockdown. And if people put extra restrictions on themselves willingly, then they could be or they should be rewarded for this. And I think that could be, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe for example, making, you know, like if you're not, if you don't play any sure gambles or, or hedge funds, uh, you get an extra ID point. Like, you know, your, your score is better again. Like it's, it's an extra kind of score for your... Uh, Maybe I don't. I mean, it's could be fun. So yeah, it's few, madness. <laughs> no, few, I, I remember there was this <laughs> so one of the parts why lockdown actually is what it is. Years ago, when we were all sitting together and still playing without masks in places, I was playing in the Swedish Nationals 2018. By the way, regards to everybody listening in the Nordics, if you are, uh, I had a blast there. Absolutely, it was amazing to be in Stockholm for that tournament. Super friendly people, loads of fun, great weather, and whatnot. But anyway, they had a side event, which was basically you were playing in a team with another person, and the two of you shared only one card pool. So, for example, if my if my teammate was playing all the hedge funds, I couldn't have any. But or or they could play two hedge funds and I could have one in my deck. This kind of limitation. I was like, this is brilliant. I mean, Ooh, it sounds spicy. It, yeah, it's weird because you're like, ah. but then I ended up making a sports metal deck with a stock buyback. Which is an amazing Wayland card, by the way. I, I think you mentioned earlier, earlier on, uh, when we were chatting about this recording, that uh, 
yeah, you want some some kind of predictions and stuff. I think Stock Buyback is a cool card for for uh, certain types of decks because it gives you a lot of money for agendas that the runners stole. Just saying, everybody should use Stock Buyback. It's awesome. So anyway, uh, I had a deck with Sports Metal and Stock Buyback, and it was winning. And I was like, wow, I made this, you know, overnight on you know, like writing it down on my knee in a bar. But it works because <laughs> my teammate was kind of randomly assigned to me, and he already had the decks. And I was like, okay, so I cannot use any of these cards or like only up to certain copies of and it was fun of course we didn't score high or it wasn't really about it was about having fun i had a blast so yeah again an inspiration from other people who came up with some cool ideas earlier on yeah but in general i think we are not here to 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 put uh, the pressure on on vespa to change anything i think the idea with the secondary tiebreaker is cool I would say let it evolve for at least one tournament and you will see how many people are interested in using it. Uh, is it maybe too good? Is it too bad? Maybe you want to change it or I don't know. But I think for a one shot, I think it's a good idea. And from there, you can go wherever you want to. I think that's a good idea. So I al already realized, so Armin and Dunch have <laughs> already strong opinions about the secondary tiebreaker. <laughs> I was really thinking also about uh, using at least influent point one. Just just leave one spare influent point and see see what is happening here. That could be a copy in your runner deck. That could be a copy of This Is Wild or uh, sorry, yeah. So like you know that could be anything. It could be something that saves your deck, but you're not going to put it in. Who knows? Okay, um, let's let's keep on going here, guys, because I really want to talk about the ban list. This is <laughs> the one where I'm most excited about. Okay, guys, so the first time you saw the ban list, if you need to describe your feeling in one word, what would be the word when you saw the ban list, Armin? Uh, no agendas, no money, no good icebreakers. Woof. <laughs> that is a very long word, okay. <laughs> and don't <laughs> that what word is you no, know that I keep <laughs> No fast advance. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to go for surprised Pikachu face, but that's not one word, so I will go for terrifying, but in a good way, terrifying, not the bad terrifying. But uh, yeah, yeah, so the the bun list in general is is tough. I think it's the toughest one that uh, lockdown ever has seen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I could use it, one word to describe it, it's definitely demanding or mm -hmm. tough or restrictive. I could also use the word genius, but no, no. no. So <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, usually people from who, who plays high in the previous tournament get to decide. This time I was just like, I'm just going to have fun with it and I'm going to be really annoying because this is the thing, you know, uh, in the lockdown channel uh, on on uh, Discord where people discuss things during the tournament and so on, uh, there have been, you know, people saying, oh yeah, if I, you know, if I get to choose things, I'm going to ban hedge fund and nobody ever did it. And I was like, let's do this. <laughs> so same for, you know, sure gamble and so on. I was like, yeah, let's just... Let's just take a very good scalpel and let's cut out all the bits and pieces that are kind of, and of course I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be banning all the key cards because that would be a bit too much and it would make the game probably unplayable. But I decided to really go hardcore. And for example, when I was choosing the runner cards, I mean you have, uh, I'm just thinking about the money cards. Yeah. Ravato. Okay. Le 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 let's stick to the to the runner ban list first. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's, I'm, I'm talking about strictly the cards that give you money. Bravado, Daily Cast, Dirty Laundry, Diversion of Funds, uh, what else? A Stim Hack, which is a staple. Sure, Gamble. And Street Peddler in a way, because you have a discount, but well, anyway. So these are not all the runner cards that give you money. I mean, you know, there are, there are some brilliant cards uh, in the game. There's over, I mean, there's hundreds of cards, you know, in the game. And you can find cards that give you money or that make things happen for you cheaper so that you don't need money. And of course, people would be like, oh, yeah, of course, you can just play Geist and so on. Yeah, but then again, you don't have Street Peddler, for example. You don't have a lot of other cards here that, that would help you and so on. So anyway, uh, there are ways of, of playing this game still that are absolutely OK. But this is taking some of the biggest things that you would usually put into your deck and just putting a big question sign question mark saying hey okay imagine those cards don't exist 
what are you going to do? How are you going to, you know, what's your win condition? How are you going to compete? And I am not smart enough because I never think about things that deep, uh, but I'm pretty sure that people building the decks for lockdown and they always think about the other side. So they look at all the other, you know, uh, they look at the opponent. If I'm building a runner deck, I'm thinking like, okay, what is the core point to put in there? And when I was doing the core list, of course I was like, yeah, okay, no money, but then also let's cut the three, three, uh, two agendas because, uh, that would be too much but yeah we can stick to the runner list first if you have any particular questions or concerns <laughs> i absolutely want to talk about it the first thing i'm sorry i go first i'm so excited to talk about this <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing i realized so we have the daily cast dirty laundry and show gamble so that's that is uh, stable in every runner deck i think if you would check some stats for standard legal card pool i think that's in 95 percent of the decks this is running i realized most cards that are banned are uh, econ cards we have a little bit of uh, tools and um, yeah multi-access banned but mostly it's uh, runner economy and mostly it's run economy so i think uh, the economy for the runner at least will shift to a resource-based economy You still have some equivalents, maybe for sure gamble, you can play your, uh, what is it called, the one from Criminals, uh, Easy Mark and stuff like that, yeah, but I think the runner economy will shift and I think everybody is thinking about two cards when you see the band list and one is Riziki and one is Aesop's Pawn Shop and I'm... I like Pawn Shop. Pawn Shop is a very balanced, very cool card. It's there since Core Set. I love it. With the Riziki, I'm a little bit concerned, to be honest. If I see the Econ card and I need to choose Economy, the first thing I think about is Riziki. I splash free Riziki in every deck. And I think for this lockdown number 11, you have to have a very good reason to not put Rizikis in your deck, I think. I don't know. What what do you think, Dunch, uh, Armin? What, what's I mean, you don't have to tell us about your decks or your ideas, but like, what do you think? Is Rizeki going to dominate the field? I think in combination uh, with well, data folding, you can get six credits per turn, and that's a shitload of credits. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the first thing I thought was, oh no, I can't play Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, me too, me too, but he is seven points. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second thing, it's too many points for me. I, I play at four points or six points mainly, so way out of my league. Um, <laughs> but I like it that so many uh, Econ cards are banned. It makes uh, me think twice what I'm going to play. There are some other uh, Econ cards in... Um, Anarch that are really interesting, like Daydrop and Guinea Pig, mm -hmm. to get lots and amounts of uh, money, even though they are hindering the build up in a really hard way, <laughs> like trashing your grip or just ending your turn. <laughs> Yeah. So do you think, Dunch, the people will rather go for some kind of a replacement? Let's say for instead of Sure Gamble, I will play Day Job. Or do you think they will shift into going away from Splash Econ into Drip Econ or Resource Base Econ? Uh, I think for Criminal and Shaper, it's more on Resource Based. And Anarch will go f hard into... Uh, events for money at least it's my opinion because you don't have to pay influence on it and it just works and i think liberated is also there it's not banned gives a shit lot of money yeah i think this especially uh, liberated will be bought in by in many decks to get enough money. I mean, your thoughts on the ban list for runners? Uh, I was actually not thinking about Shaper with this ban list because 
Yeah, they have Riziki and Pawnshop, but they're pretty cheap to splash into other factions, and they're pretty good. Especially Riziki, if you have the memory. I was more thinking that uh, Criminals and Anarch have the better economy. Like, Anarch has so many cards which give you money, like the Companions and Liberated Accounts. Mm. And I think we will see quite, quite a few of Katie Jones just to get some yep. money. It's still a good card. And like, uh, the criminals can use like uh, rook trading, like where you get shitload of money for two clicks and uh, attack. If you build a deck around that, I think you have at least some economy. But yeah, runners gonna have less money, which will mean probably that asset spam is stronger. But then you need to look at the corp balance, but we leave that for later. <laughs> yeah. well, I only have two words about assets, asset spam and, and runners. Uh, miss bones. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, it's a splash, of course, for some. So, yeah. so what kind of faction do you think is um, was hit the most and was hit the least with the runner ban list? I think the least was Anach. They don't have really bad hits. Like, who needs target if you have medium? And I think Shapers are hit the worst, like without SMZ and Angolo. It's not so easy to build a deck. I think uh, the hits on Criminal and Shaper are hits more or less on everybody than just on the two fractions and Shaper, uh, no, no, Anarx didn't get hit at all. At least it feels for me the Stimhack, more or less the only hit on Anarx. But it's a Shaper card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a red Shaper card, yeah, yeah absolutely. Red Shaper yeah. Card, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, at least in combination, the SMC together with the Stimhack, um, makes a lot of shaper bullshit uh, very hard and it's also kind of a passive passive nerf for simul chip yeah but i would say criminals were hit the most i don't know you were talking about rogue trading i have no idea how i would build a criminal deck with this Band runner cards. I don't know. I think like seventy-five percent of the criminal econ is down the drain with the band runner cards, and I think uh, the least one that was hit uh, is uh, Shaper. This is only my opinion, of course. Um, <laughs> oh, because, that's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, really. I think uh, as long as you have uh, Proco and uh, Riziki and Aesop's Pawn Shop, you're good to go. Okay, you lost SMC. That's fine. You can uh, find alternative ways to fetch your breakers. There's a lot of them. And I think it's the easiest. Uh, you can pretty much take a standard legal Shaper deck and with a little bit of uh, customization, you're good to go. I really like that we have different opinions. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's why really we're here. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Vespa, what was, was the thinking about? Do you think about a certain factions you wanted to to make harder to build around? Or was it just like uh, you, you want especially this card to go because of the following reason? So one thing you mentioned, one thing you mentioned earlier is, uh, you know, some cards here are like the staple and they go into 95% of the decks, whatever the color, whatever, whatever the faction, whatever the tournament, I would say, you know, like people just go like, yeah, of course, I'm going to play this because it's a good card. And the idea here was to just say, you know, the, the, this meta for this tournament is going to be without those cards. I looked at nowthemeta.com, which is another great site by Necro. Uh, from the Hungarian meta, and I was like, yeah, okay, what cards are there that are super popular? Okay, this, 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 and this. And then, there, what are the cards that I keep seeing, for example, in the decks for worlds that people have been using, and they're kind of, again, universally used. And this was not about... Uh, let's use the word... like It was not about hating on a particular faction or anything like this. It was more like, no. What could be an interesting card to take away and see what happens? And this is the part here as well. Like, okay, how are you going to play criminal if you don't have bravado and if you don't have uh, 
uh, boomerangs to to you know to have easy accesses super fast to play super aggressively. If you don't have the version of funds, I mean, you can, th there are still ways of building criminals. There are still ways of you know, Gabe exists. Gabe gives you two credits for running HQ. Will you go back to Gabe? Maybe Gabe with Sneak Door Beta is going to be the top scoring runner in this edition. I don't know. Like That would be quite interesting to see if people go for criminal. Uh, but Gabe hasn't been, for example, used for a long time by a lot of people competitively because there are better options on the table that, that are more aggressive or that mm, create a certain uh, play style that is good for a lot of people and that capitalizes on cards like boomerang or street peddler you know like everybody loves geist geist is like a scary deck i cannot play geist because i always call it being the dj you have to have like four hands actually to play geist correctly at a tournament with a time limit because you you have so many triggers so many different things but it's it's a play style that some people adore and they love and it's their preferred way of playing runners and i'm like yeah okay so let's take your street pillars away and no boomerangs for you. And I actually haven't hit Geist hard enough. But anyway, this is not about <laughs> this is not about <laughs> hitting Geist either. Uh, but yeah, for example, taking away the Turning Wheel, which is a card that has been banned before as well. From some of these cards, I, from most of these cards, they have been banned on other lockdowns already as well. And the Turning Wheel, for example, is a great little card for one influence for everybody that provides really interesting and well designed. I'm not saying it's imbalanced, but it's a very well designed balanced universal uh, multi-axis and the thing is like okay well factions have their own multi-axis ways you know like shapers have kyushuk they have they have uh, maker's eye they have indexing now with, with solid memories and then of course on arts well medium and whatnot like there's a lot of cards already in faction that do uh, a different flavor of the turning wheel so let's just take this away because maybe it's not that crucial but for some people might be a better game plan for them than, than using their infaction stuff. And let's try and see if people are going to go for the interfaces again or for some other solution. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I don't even know if the turning wheel would be played that much. I like that it's gone because it's a little bit harder to play around with Corp because you already need for the deck building to think about what cards what ice you put in your deck, is it good against turning wheel if you put it on a central and stuff like that. I think if I look at the band runner cards, I, I see a little bit of a theme, I would say. So we have the boomerang band, the angelo and the SMC, all three cards that uh, provide um, very early aggression, I would say. At least th those are the most used cards you see to contest a remote early. If you, mm -hmm. for example, put a Rashida behind a piece of ice, turn one, the cards that will make the access to the Rashida will be either Boomerang, Angolo, or uh, the SMC, especially the SMC for the Shapers and the Boomerangs for the Criminals. So this will shift a little bit uh, away from early pressure. I think that remotes will be... Uh, you have a few more turns as Corp to uh, put anything you want into the remote. But it's this, the thing about lockdown, that's the first impression and then you think about, oh, <laughs> but there are other good cards I can play for early aggression. Absolutely. Like absolutely. inside job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, so I totally that is agree. the question, if you expect your opponent to play safe, if he thinks he's safe in the early game, then maybe it's good to have some inside jobs. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe inside job is a very good card in this edition, I think. Maybe it is. In Gabe. <laughs> yeah, inside job Gabe with Sneak Door is winning Lockdown 11. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think Gabe... I'm it right now. Uh, Gabe I made it like that. Point. <laughs> you build a Gabe deck, I mean. Dead. <laughs> we... we, we <laughs> Scoops. Uh, yeah, we spoiled his super secret tech. For uh, actually, I'm not sure if I'm play it. I have another good deck. <laughs> He's saying and and crying out silently. 
<laughs> the good thing about lockdown is that you may have a brilliant idea and a good deck, and then it gets tested against everybody else's good ideas and and interesting decks, and you're like, oh, and this is the fun part. So this this is why why this format I think is still popular with people, and nobody was like, oh yeah, we played it before, Mah. whatever, because it keeps changing, and people keep coming up with really cool ideas, and I love that. And the cool thing about Lockdown is also you can just uh, play regular Tinteki games with your Lockdown deck and you don't even need to tell the opponent you play a Lockdown deck, you can test it if it's working or not. <laughs> Good point. And sometimes it just miserably fails because yes, of you. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you I tried put this in the last few days. you rank ice in your deck and you play against Amakua, which is banned, this no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to try out your super poor corp deck and you play against good stuff Leela all the time, uh, that's really miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think, oh, I don't see an Angelo. Angelo. You just see it every time you play this yeah, deck. Yeah, just, just pretend it's not there. You just keep on playing and pretending, okay, if he doesn't, would have the Angelo, I would be fine. So yeah, I, I, I like the band runner cards. I think this is mostly, uh, yeah, like I said before, it's econ based. It's a little bit of a win condition took away like the, um, the Stargate and the turning wheel, but there's a lot of alternatives. I think that's not too bad to play around. Economy will be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to the decks the other people build. Really I'm curious forward. how many. Yeah, I'm curious how many drug dealers we're gonna. See. Oh, no, sorry, not drug dealers. Uh, data dealers. Sorry, because that's <laughs> that's a card that I remember when I saw this. I was like, this is brilliant. Click and an agenda, and you get nine credits. But then I was like, wait a minute. But agendas are what wins you the game. So, uh, but then certain cards appeared that counted as agendas, but were not really worth points, or actually were worth negative points for the runner. I was like, hmm, data dealer is still a good card. Uh, yeah, absolutely. After Worlds, I think Data Dealer is back on track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody played it in Worlds. That's why why Agenda Spam deck won Worlds. Yeah, and I, I like the runner ban list. Uh, actually, I like the whole ban list, and that's the reason I came back to Netrunner and was uh, sitting in front of my computer and started deck building, which I think it's one of the m most fun part of Netrunner. Oh, that's that's really cool to hear. Thank you. I mean, I think I'm going to start putting up stickers, you know, like uh, as prizes or as 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 kind of uh, maybe some sort of a merch around this. Like, I like the ban list. <laughs> that's gonna uh, be yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to, to say? Oh, oh, sorry, don't. Yes. I just uh, want uh, like to build decks. I build them all the time, and I see them fail miserably all the time until they are good enough to be played in the open. And I think it just gives deck building a little kick to make it more fun to have these ban lists. Absolutely, that's a lot of spice on top of the ID scores. Absolutely. I actually have a very, very quick question to, to all of you, uh, if I may. Uh, because this is about restricting cards and saying you cannot play these cards, but what if there was a list, and this is purely experimental and an idea that just came to me while we were talking here, what if there was a list that was kind of reversed? So, for example, for breakers, these are the only allowed cards, and there would be a small list of breakers, so not all of them would be allowed. Uh, let's say there would be like uh, three breakers from each faction allowed or something like this. Would you think that would be interesting or is it better to just have the white pool and some cards taken out? I would like to see that mm -hmm. because you mainly see Angelo, Paperclip all the time and if we, for example, ban these, people have to think about other breakers we then see in the open. The moment Paperclip is not not the biggest threat because of Lady, but that's another point. I like the white pool, but uh, I'm always happy for some challenges. <laughs> I also like the, the bandist as it is right now. 
if it would be reversed, it would be just like the band list would be like 60 cards long or <laughs> maybe 100 cards because all your breakers True. are banned because there is so much. I totally agree that there, if you think about the list, if you go on Netrunner DB and search for the icebreakers on each faction, how fucking many icebreakers are there? Nobody ever plays because there yep. are too many staples. Um, yeah. For uh, the big free ones we have is like Pepperclip, uh, Angolo and Bukalta at the moment. I think it might be enough if the people would um, just banning the, the big ones. Yeah, This would at least make you a little bit creative. But as long as the three big ones are here, yeah, people will never ever play play the other icebreakers that's a general problem for a net runner i think especially with icebreakers that's also a big problem or a big issue nisei has to solve for future sets that you can't print any more icebreakers as long as those super effective uh, effective icebreakers are in the game you can only power creep them and this makes the things even worse because it's a it's a, a spiral that is going yeah. downward. So, you, down, yeah. Yeah, so it, we have already so many icebreakers, but they are very situational, very niche. They can be even better than the big ones. They can be even more effective, but people will always choose the staple ones over the situational ones. Yeah, I totally agree. The icebreaker suit could be so much more interesting in Netrunner. But they're not balanced. Like some are really strong, some are strong, and some are so terrible, weak. I think I... good example for that are the central breakers from the criminals. Like I they're love these. really Me good. Too. Me too. Yeah. But every decent core player would just think, okay, I have an agenda. Put it out. You can't run it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. look at the pure it's numbers, like for example, for the central breakers. So your book halter is better than I think Elias is the one, the, the sentry breaker from the central yeah. breakers. The sentry breaker from the central breakers. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. And yeah, so they they just got power creeped. They were good in honor and profit time, but every every good breaker is just so much more effective. I I love also I love those. I'm so so sad about Mongoose. Mongoose is one of my most favorite cards in Netrunner and I played it so much and it was so much fun and there were ways around for the cop to play around Mongoose by stacking your eyes and then Bukalta hits the field and I was so sad and nobody will ever play Mongoose again as long as Bukalta is uh, legal. Yeah, well, I don't want to talk too much about, but if you want to solve this n icebreaker problem, you really need to ban at least 15 to 20 icebreakers to make, to stop the power creep spinal. That's what my opinion is. I might be totally wrong, but that is, I was thinking a lot about this, but that is, so maybe, I don't know, yeah, Vesper, maybe you have a good point there by, by just just forcing the people to play a different icebreaker suit. Actually, actually, if uh, there would only be the shitty icebreakers <laughs> be allowed, probably I wouldn't play. I would try to play non-icebreakers and get another way into the servers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, there's sta uh, sorry, there's draft, right? Draft has usually very crappy icebreakers that are forced mm -hmm. on you. But I mean, no, the, the, basically, the reason why I asked about this, for example, is that this this edition is heavy on the economy in a way, and there's like Angolo out because Angolo is a power card. But I totally didn't ban Paperclip or Book Halter, and the more I think about it, like, yeah, maybe having like expanding the standard ban list with a standard lockdown ban list, which would, for example, include some like the most popular icebreakers, you know, the two most popular icebreakers in each faction, the two most popular. Uh, economy cards in each faction and so on so kind of take off the top of the meta and just say play with the rest because there's a lot of cards in there and I totally agree like the, the central breakers I love them they're, they're amazing ideas you reminded me of Mongoose because again Mongoose is a card that I played also like you know years ago but yeah now it just doesn't make sense it's a great little card it's cute it has an amazing image on it and so on but why would you play it it's just not as good as book hunting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, but the problem is, yeah, you, you, you were mentioning draft, that's true. There's only shitty icebreakers, yeah. But <laughs> on the uh, opposite side, there's also only shitty ice. Exactly. So if yeah. you take away efficiency from the breakers, you need, need to take away efficiency from the taxing ice. Otherwise, yeah. if you just take away the icebreakers, the ice suit will just be horrible you will never ever be able to break anything because it's so yeah. expensive yeah. and then then you have the another the other problem how many eyes do you want to burn so you need to burn like a hundred eyes because it's just too effective and uh, i think it's very hard very hard to find a good balance yeah and this this idea. is kind of like you know c cutting cutting the meta in such big parts is something that I definitely don't want Lockdown to become because the, I mean the idea is to have fun with it, uh, but it's mostly standard. And I think there are people who are you know trying to figure out how to create a meta or how to create uh, a card pool that would be uh, less powerful and still fun to play. I mean this is what this is what the core sets uh, were about in a way. You know, or like the the general idea was to have. Uh, a limited card pool with all the interactions and so on but and would still be playable and enjoyable but you just don't have that many uh, options like this is what you have and you kind of learn the game as you play over and over and over again and then if you want you can expand your game I mean, that was the whole idea of uh, an LCG and I totally agree like Nisei has a huge challenge here because I mean, what other cards or what types of cards do you put into new packs? You know, like how do you expand the game? Of course, people want to have new agendas because that's always fun. And they want to have new operations and new, new ways of, of maybe kind of expanding certain play types or, or creating a certain new play style with something, you know, like uh, horizontal decks were not a thing up to a certain point and then suddenly they were like wow you know ctm and all that that was like wow a bit too much for some people uh you know central's aggression all that i mean different play styles came up or or rose to prominence over time for the because of the different cards that arrived and to cut down on this is a very hard hard thing so i think what's going to happen for example with gateway i'm not sure how people are going to react and you know the new players and so on but I think there might be some sort of a restarting point in a way, like a rebooting point from Gateway, where people are like, okay, so we're just going to play from Gateway onwards. Like all the other cards exist and they're lovely and amazing and they could be good for collecting or something. But if I got into the game starting with Gateway, I'm just going to stick to this and keep building from that onwards. And that could be a meta in itself, of course. And I'm pretty sure it will be of some sort, you know, because it's a limited card pool different ways of interacting and so on and so forth and that's going to maybe drive some new people joining the hobby to explore the game and maybe you know maybe at some point they'll be like oh yeah buy out the glaber what does this do or ooh you know what, what's that card but maybe they're just going to be in their new meta and they're going to be happy with it which would also be great because the more people play the game the better for everybody playing the game so that's yeah, that's the whole idea here Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, also, now where we are in end times, where getting some real Fantasy Fly game cards is becoming nearly impossible for some packs. Okay, you can always print them, print them yourself, or make some proxies and stuff like that. But I also think maybe that's also what Nise uh, wants to accomplish to really to really do a Netrunner 3.0 and say okay you know what we're gonna solve the whole problem with the power creep which has every card game by the way every card game has the power creep problem with the new cards and just say let's make a cut and maybe start from here and maybe I don't know in two years we are at a point where only Nise cards will be legal and the Fantasy Fly games one will just be legal for let's say Eternal because you always have the different formats, you always have the the chance to play your old cards if you want to, and there are so many different formats. You can handicap yourself as much as you want, but standard will always be the most played one, and yeah, well, very exciting times at least. 
okay, but before we go too much <laughs> into detail about <laughs> general Netrunner, I really enjoy this, but yeah. then we just keep going on with the Bund Corp cards. Anything oh, yeah. you want to, to, to say beforehand, Vespa, about the Bund Corp cards? Uh, no, I'm just gonna let the three of you pick it apart and tell me what you like about it and what you don't like about it, because I'm curious. <laughs> the word project pops up a lot in that list. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the project, all the three twos agendas are banned, which I think is pretty cool. Like, uh, they're so. Most of them are so man, uh, much played. Why not trying without them once? And there are some more or less free twos or the semi free twos, at least in uh, Jinteki, um, you can play so they're not all free twos banned. That makes true. it relatively no, no. Yep. interesting to at least try to make a fast advance taking Jinteki than all the others can't now because all the force advance cards are banned. Okay, not all, but a great number. Yeah, I think I, I agree. So a fast advance is is getting a big, big hit. You can still fast advance, I think, but it's gonna be very, Harder. very different. Yeah, yeah. I think tenon is, is is a good point. You can really play a tenon fast advance deck. Yeah, you still have it's... the philotic if you want to. Yeah, and medical. F uh... Breakthrough. Oh yeah, yeah, like a, like a pseudo free tool. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, and just as a reminder, in case you're worried, uh, there's also the certain NBN card that popped up recently because of salvage memories. If I remember correctly, Sun Sun City mm. Grid. So it's yeah. not cheap. But the thing, ima imagine if you play. I mean, this is what you already mentioned as well earlier, earlier on. It's you know, you play with Sansan City Grid and you play with three twos and it's like, uh, so then basically two twos and then it's like I install advanced advanced score, it, the game is over in a couple of rounds because mm, the runner cannot get in or something and I'm kind of like, okay, well, how about you still have to install and double advance and then you have to wait because you don't have that many clicks unless you figure out how to make those clicks. So I love Sansan as a card, one of my favorite Netrunner cards as well on the corp side, of course, which is evil, but anyway. But for example, here you will have to. Well, okay, not for pu uh, not for uh, ex excuse me for philotics, but you will have to install advance advance, and then the runner will have a chance to act most of the time. And uh, yeah, the the fast advance being taken away. Uh, I love Titan, but it's a scary deck. <laughs> so Titans are going to have a hard life, even though they already cost a few ID points. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, I think it's still going to be fun for people to, to see what they can put as agendas in because three twos are, are staples. Like Atlas is probably in 99% in uh, Wayland decks. Vitruvius is probably in 99% HP decks. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, of course, there are some that are completely happy without those agendas. But yeah, let's, let's just see what people come up with. And another really hard hit is Jeeves. So you cannot uh, score 3-2, but you cannot score um, a 4-2 as well, because without Chiefs you cannot just score in one round. And then for the Glacier, you don't have a border control and you don't have a firewall, so Glacier is tough. And if you want to play just small agendas and you really miss the three twos agenda, so I think it's interesting to build a deck with uh, this agenda suite. Absolutely. You mentioned the border control. This was the second thought I had with the Bund Corp cards. The first one was Fast Advance is dead, and the second one was uh, Chintiki Glacier is dead. Because the border control, the Cyber Deck Sandbox, and the Bio Vault, these are free power cards that uh, I call it the modern Palana. It also can be egg infusion, um, but yeah, those are very staples that are now gone, which I'm very, very happy because I hate border control and cyber deck sandbox. It's just absolutely broken. I'm very happy that people start to realize how broken it really is. I think the numbers on it are just bonkers. I already said this last year in January from uh, German nationals. So you hear it first from me. 
<laughs> where I was saying <laughs> Cyberdeck Sandbox is totally bonkers. Uh, I like this. I think that was also the intention of you, uh, Vespa, to to take away the Palana style. Yeah, I mean, generally, I looked uh, I looked at the popularity of certain agendas, and I have to tell you that Cyberdeck Sandbox is in a ton of decks because you know you score an agenda and then purging viruses not only purges viruses but gives you money so sometimes for the corp you know you just do mandatory and then you just spend three clicks getting four credits because that's the best option for you anyway and i'm not saying it's overpowered or or broken or anything like this it's just it's a very particular card that does certain things much better than its equivalents in any way and for example i think i don't know like corporate uh, sales team is a cool card that also gives you money but it does in a slightly different drippier and maybe a bit more balanced way where a cyber -like sandbox is just like yeah okay oh you run into my cvs oh that's more money for me oh and then you encounter the macro page oh that's more money for me and so on and so forth and it's it's cool that it's cool that we have this agenda and i like it but I've seen it in so many places. I was like, okay, how about no cyberdex and folks for yeah. this station? <laughs> yeah. Let's see, you know, let's let's get. For example, global food is also banned because mm. it's been banned before. But it's an agenda that some people would just use for some nasty tricks or whatever. I mean, nasty tricks, well, balance, fair and balanced netrunner on the corp side. But uh, it's good to not have it, and then people will have to creatively go around it. I'm I'm interested that nobody mentioned hedge fund. I mean. What do you think corps are going to do without hedge funds? Sleep speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I really think uh, that the hit of Sure Gamble is much more impactful than the hit of Hedge 4. Of course, everybody is playing Hedge 4, but I think corps uh, have a much more of a replacement cards. I think every faction has its replacement cards for Hedge 4. And mm -hmm. you can also just go for, let's say, uh, asset-based economy. So I think the Bond Corp cards are much less uh, impactful for economy than it is for uh, their gender suit. So uh, Hedge 4, yeah, I love it. I love it that it's gone. I also love that Rashida is gone because everybody is playing those cards. <clears throat> but it's quite easy to replace Hedge 4, I, th I, I, I would say. I would say, of course, you will miss it. Absolutely, you will absolutely miss it. But yeah, and you have so many other ways around to get some splash econ. If you're really keen on playing the splash econ, you have the um, too big to fail. You have beanstalk royalties, sweeps week, uh, celebrity gift. Uh, yeah, I, the list is but endless. But you know, you I can think. you can never have too much money. Uh, yes, yes. That's true, but yeah, hedge for if you if you rely on the economy of hedge for you're already lost, I would say. So hedge for is is not enough. But that's true when you look at corp decks from a standard card pool. You have the hedge for IPO, NGO, Rashida, and back in the days you also had SSL. Those were all neutral cards, and you put all neutral cards in your deck, and your economy was good to go. It's cool to not to see this anymore, and especially when Hedge 4 and Rashida is gone. It's also, I think, very intelligent to not ban NGO, especially when the fast advance is gone, because my prediction at least is that the corps will tend to play a lot more uh, 5 freeze. And without NGO, playing 5 freeze will be very difficult. Because corps need to think about what you need to fill up your deck to your 20, 21, maybe 18 agenda points. You have no free twos, you have no global food, and you have no cyber decks. I think you really... The, the, the most challenge for cops will be what will be your your agenda suit in this and edition. And how are you gonna score it? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yes. Trick of light! Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still ways around to, to fast it once, but I mean, what is your prediction? Do you think the cops will tend to go for bigger agendas and go more glaciary with more taxing eyes and a slower kind of deck? Or do you think the people will more tend to play, like uh, Vespa mentioned before, to play smaller agendas and start spamming one free agendas or 
Yeah, like my first idea was like, oh, sports medal, and then I looked at the points, oh, nine points, not really good. Uh, I really don't know, like, uh, I think we will see everything. Like, three fives and one threes, but I don't know, because like, the smaller genders usually need their ID and they're really expensive, like Personal Evolution Chintake is really expensive and Sports Metal and Argos. And if, if you play really wide, I don't know how to score their genders really, like if you have very little eyes. I probably we're gonna see one kind of deck a lot, it's uh, traps. Oh, that's an interesting take, okay. Yeah, tr I think trap decks are very good in this edition. I was also thinking about some kind of a Mushin deck, because those were not hit at all, and you can pretty pretty much play a Mushin deck out of any Jinteki identity. It doesn't need to be personal evolution, you have some very low ID cost identities you can play it out. Yeah. Don't spoil too much. <laughs> I don't want to play free, <laughs> free <laughs> Jinteki trap decks. I just want to remember my, uh, I think second uh, lockdown I played on with Cybernetics Division and Mushin Mushin, and it was just great, and nothing of it is banned. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, have to, go. to change the hedge front with something, and the deck is good to go. <laughs> no key, I have to change the SSL because it's banned now. Yeah, you just put Vasharon or something else, I don't know. There, yeah, absolutely. Because there is a lot of good 5 frees, I think, and a lot of good 4-2s uh, left. So the best one, in my opinion, is banned with Cyberdex, but you still have good options, and Nisei provided us with a lot of ways to make uh, scoring 4-2s a lot easier with the most prominent, I think, is La Costa Grid. You can splash La Costa Grid in pretty much any deck. And if you go for a very fast playstyle, you maybe just score out because runner are gonna play Rizikis and um, very slow economy and you might just win in seven turns. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's also a good attempt. Probably. Yeah, sounds good. I think about big HP uh, Ice World decks with uh, MCA. Oh, oh, that's also interesting. Yeah, yeah, true. MCA yeah. is is still legal, yeah. And they are more or less, except from Chiefs and Hedgefront, no cards that are really banned out of this construct. The Vitruvius can be changed out, and these big decks are with Ginger are good to go. They're yeah, relatively... that's true. Yeah, that's true. So I think we will see a lot of these decks. What do you guys think about the uh, ice buns? So two ice are buns. One is the Anansi, one is the slot machine. I think Anansi sounds a little bit like a hate pick for me. I don't know if that is true. Same for the slot machine. And the border control. Oh um, yeah, and the border control. Oh sorry, for me that is no ice. That is just a just a trick. But but okay, yeah, of course it's an ice. I think yeah, I like that uh, border control is banned and um, Nancy and slot machine are just power cards and yeah, we, we can play a game without them, I think that's good. I think for Nancy we could have banned Surveyor instead, because we have more or less only hits on uh, some special ice bills and not on these Ginger HP decks, because they won't play Anansi, but Surveyor and other good cards. Oh, yeah, and there's no boomerang now. The number, and there's no boomerang to get through it. So these decks are really, really strong. So Vespa, think... explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just listening to you. I'm like, damn it, I should have banned Surveyor. No, so the... <laughs> this, list is, this list is coming strictly from my own kind of... Mm, in a way wish list, in a way perception in a way just looking at numbers and so on and I absolutely agree that yeah no boomerang and surveyor in a ginger city grid deck is gonna be scary for the runners um, maybe I should have banned ginger because I think surveyor on its own is fair enough ginger is just 
super scary with Surveyor, and that's that's the part that makes it a bit tough for me when I think about it. But yeah, probably Jinja's gonna be on the ban list next time. Uh, for the ice bans in general, Anansi, I think it's the strongest uh, Jinteki ice right now, or kind of the most reliable one because it's just it's just so good. I mean, yeah. I love it, uh, and I I. I don't remember seeing a Jinteki deck without Anansi, so I'm like, okay, well, let's hit something. Uh, border control is a bit of a... I agree with your opinion. It's a bit of a... It's not really a nice, it's more like a tool, but it's... I like the... the, the design space it explores, which is kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to forfeit a nice, but this is going to be an end run, and... It's not really that hard to break, but it, it really introduces a lot of interesting decisions. Uh, you all, well, the, the, the sad part is you have to always, of course, count with running that remote, and then you have to run two clicks left instead of on your last click, for example, because there will be a biotic uh, uh, border control, sorry, so you will have to break the border control and you will get stopped and you have to come in again, and so on and so forth. So that's it kind of became a part of the game a bit too much, I think. Like, everybody's always come to good border control <laughs> everywhere, basically, because it just exists. And uh, Slot Machine, it's a very interesting ice. And this is the funny thing. I mean, Anansi has been... It was designed by, by the FFG designers. Border Control and Slot Machine, they came through the champions. Like, these are the champion mm -hmm. cards. Yep. And they're very interesting, very different designs. And both the people, uh, you know, uh, both Jess Horig and uh, Chris Dyer, uh, who are kind of responsible for this. I mean, they're not, but the ideas came from them. They really pushed the game's envelope far with, with those cards. I mean, especially Slot Machine, such a brilliant design. It just does a lot of things at the same time. And I remember reading it two or three times, going like, wait, what is this guy doing again? Whoa! Like wow, this I mean it's super thematic and so on and so forth. The the part where I what I run into playing a lot of different people or, or just looking at different you know tournaments and streaming them or watching other people's streams is like slot machine is everywhere. It's really like it's oh I, I have some influence left over and uh, oh yeah slot machine. It will do something right, and I love this on one hand. On the other hand, it's like okay, what cards can I remove? try and ban for this edition just to say the cards you always keep seeing are just not going to show up and I do realize that for certain builds or certain play styles I did not think about that and maybe this is something I should bring to the to the folks uh, who are going to maybe help me shape the next edition it's like okay we have Glacier what can we hit in Glacier three cards in Glacier that we can hit to make it less uh, scary Three cards in asset spam that we can make the core less scary again. You know, three cards in what else? Like fast advance and and so on and so forth. So take apart some of the biggest uh, archetypes and then see what else people come up with. And again, by no means lockdown is meant to make the game of Netrunner fair or balanced or anything. No, it's just it's just cutting people's options just to see what they come up with for fun and this is this is the whole drive behind it because <laughs> i remember uh, uh, uh some people pinging me and saying hey are, are you a part of the mwl team back then and like are, are you going to be the putting things on the next standard ban list based on the results i was like no come on like this doesn't make any sense so no in, in case anybody's wondering i have no idea whatsoever what the next standard ban list will be because i'm way too i don't know how outside of the meta game in in netrunner to understand what cards are you know powerful or what cards should be uh stopped or or tampered with or limited in any way restricted in any way so lockdown is not a laboratory for the standard ban list in case anybody's wondering however i am happy that some of the cards that keep appearing in lockdown you know like people vote on them and say hey we don't want this we don't want that they do actually end up in the standard ban list so that's that's fun yeah, well, maybe that's that's a general sign for the, the the power and the strength of the cards. So I I don't I think there is some 
some person, personal reasons behind some of the bands from from the, the well I'm talking about the top players from the last uh, lockdown event why they are banning some cards but I think that's a general a general mood of some cards why some cards are banned and you will always see them popping up again on the band list and stuff like that and yeah well maybe there's a reason behind it and you 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 might want to do some statistics for a thousand games and you will come up to the same conclusion and maybe that's why why they are popping up on the next band list from Nice. But Vesper, you don't need to worry about if you say, ah, well, maybe I have done this, I need to do this, because as you said, I think it's impossible to, to balance the format. It's impossible. And like I said before, people are so adaptive. They don't care what you ban. It will not take five minutes until somebody will say, hey, what about this? Then this <laughs> is still good. And what about that? And yeah, that's endless. That's endless. I think take away some things and let's see what the people doing with the cards that are left exactly i agree yeah at some point i was also thinking you know like what if for example what if for each faction that's in the game uh i just make a standard ban list in a way uh or like a Uh, standard ban list and wrong, wrong, but like a recurring ban list for this, and let let's just say five most popular NBN cards out, five most popular Wayland cards out, five most criminal, most played criminal cards out, and so on and so forth, and that would still probably evolve over time slowly because the game changes, the standard meta changes, but it would probably be too slow, and I also realized that it would make it very dry in a way, and it it wouldn't make it it would be just another standard band list kind of or standard band list plus which i think takes away from the fun of people coming into the game and saying hey i really i just hate this card you know like i lost this one game and that one tournament three years ago to this card and i know it's okay but i just hate it. can we ban it's like yeah sure so <laughs> this is the fun part where people just get to shape the meta and have fun with it because uh like anything else in this game it's just all about the people playing it you know without without the community there's not much of a game going so as as much as the community can influence this format it's the best fun it can be and by the way uh i could have a long list and i could just keep going you know with different names and so on but i think every single person every single smaller or bigger group of people who came up with some sort of a alternative format to standard Uh, whatever it is, you know, whether if it's Red Runner, whether it's you know the the reboot, like a ton of different ideas out there to just keep playing with the same cards or tweaking existing cards or whatever. It's a lot of work. I hope it's a lot of fun for everybody. But like, huge thanks to those people for experimenting and exploring because this makes the game super flavorful for everybody and anybody. You know, we all have different preferences we all play this game for different reasons and you know like i'm not a person who would ever play eternal but i know people who love eternal and i'm like whoa okay <laughs> i couldn't wrap my head around eternal but it exists and it's important that we have it even you know even if it's played by five people although i think there's way more but it's it's great that they have the option that they like it because it's the, the game is for the folks playing it so we need people to to enjoy it and we need people to play around with the idea of how the game works to make it better as well or to make it more fun yeah so true i think this is so true so the people really need those optional formats i think everybody agrees that standard is super cool and super fun and the most competitive but you really need something different some people love eternal i also don't like it i can also not wrap my head around it but if we w only would stick to one format i think it would be a very very boring world very soon so i love it and you, at first i was a little bit concerned that maybe too much formats will split the community too much but that's not the case that's not the case i think everybody is coming back to standard and they will will play at worlds and at big tournaments and stuff like that and in between they're gonna 
looking for the fun they can do with lockdown or now with the new popping ups like uh, the throwback and the ocarina one and you really see also on the the number of attendees in these tournaments that this is really something the community also like that the community needs and that the people also wish to play Okay, guys, so now we are already in one and a half hour. Um, let's talk a little bit about the ID score changes. Um, I I did have a quantum computer working, uh, working for weeks to find out that there were some ID score changes. And I think the one that's popping up most to me is that a lot of the, I would say, best runner identities are now... 10 points so that means they are only playable with one identity if you want to choose one of these and this is the new angel soul which is basically a blank identity and and the end at that so it kind of forces you into a certain color as well yeah so yeah I, there were two 10 point identities i think in the last edition and now it's like five let me check for a second so now we have a 10 point geist we have freedom which is on 10 points which i absolutely love because i think freedom is a, a sleeper card it's very very good we have Haley, hoshiko shiro lila and even val so that's i think those are uh, six runners we won't see at Sunday. I, I don't think anybody has has the balls of steel to play a 10-point runner just to play New Angel Soul. <laughs> Probably not. But what's wrong with New Angel Soul? I mean, you know, <laughs> it actually lowers your score. So you're, you're uh, yeah, yeah, it's point. great. Really, uh, by, <laughs> let, I was really thinking about using a zero point runner and a minus one point, point uh, cop deck just to troll you to have the minus points but <laughs> I was soon realizing I will end up at zero points <laughs> no, I think there is really no good way to build uh, the new angel assault I am absolutely clueless so we also have uh, some more changes um what I think is uh, interesting, the seven point runners are a few ones that we have seen in lockdowns before. It's like Ken and Lat were very popular, I think, in most editions from lockdown. They are now seven points. Yeah, and that's quite tough. Sunny as well. Yeah, Sunny as well. Yeah, true. And maybe this is because of uh, Captain Nice. <laughs> always, <Yeah. laughs> always playing Sunny and always winning. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Carbonesa Wu is now a four point. Yeah, but yeah, Shapers lost the SMC. Yeah, I don't think Wu is is too viable anymore. It's also fun, Gabriel is a one point. And for me, the most uh, impressive thing is that Quetzal is only a one point runner. I think you can build a really cool Quetzal deck with uh, Pelangi and the uh, E3 feedback in plans with the current uh, salvage memory. I think that's quite good. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so does it doesn't mean we know you who did. The <laughs> <deck>. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think mm -hmm. that is surprising. Yeah, for one point I see this and I was thinking like, ah, okay, that is maybe the best runner you can pick for one or zero point. Was my first idea as well. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, that's cool. That, that means that's kind of true. <laughs> I think I saw yeah. one of those decks in the stream and was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm really thinking about the many zero point uh, IDs. Mm -hmm. Like yep. Null and uh, Loss, which are actually quite interesting to play, especially when there is not that much amount of money around. And Chilouette is also not too bad with Amakur. Yeah, that's right. Yep. But you what I miss is a really cheap shaper. Yeah, well, you have Chaos Theory and Jasminda on two For points. Two points. Yeah, that's that's the lowest. Chaos lowest Theory point. gives you an extra MU, so it's you know, and Jasminda has a cool uh, ability as well. It's just she's not that popular because people would just say, yeah, Haley's better. 
or what have you. So yeah. Yeah, that's right. But I, I quite uh, like playing Jasmine. Uh, it's one of yeah. my favorite yeah, runners. Me too. The, uh, be honest, don't you already build your Jasminder deck again, or <laughs> you bring Jasminder on Sunday? I'm quite certain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not playing Jasminder. I have Jasminder deck built for for Sunday, but I won't play it. <laughs> but I can say so much. Uh, my runner is or can f be found in the two points as well. Ooh. Yeah, I think there are some nice runners to choose from really low points. I agree. Yeah, really good ones. Why would you go low on points on the runner if you cannot get a good corp for it? I mean, what corps would you choose? Well, like, if you spend very little for the runner, you have many options. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think everything above 8 points from corp, you can build a really uh, bestial deck out of. You can start with CTM to replicate perfection, sports metal, Argos. And yeah, I yeah, also realized that last time only Titan was a 10 pointer. And now we also have a lot more uh, Corp decks, which is on 10 points. We have the Egg Infusion, the Aza, Palana, and surprisingly the Outfit. What's up with the new 10 point uh, ID scores? So you did you change um, the ID scores based upon the the standings from the last last editions, or do you do you revolve them around the current uh, meta, the current card pool, for example, now the salvaged memories? Yeah. So one one thing that that I was working on, or not working on, but I I did look at the scores, like you mentioned, from previous lockdowns, just to see what was popular, more or less, and that kind of influenced my picks for this round. And then uh, at Worlds, I was basing a lot of the changes, a lot of the shifts, maybe, you know, things going up, things going down, on Worlds uh, positions as well, or like, uh, what was popular at Worlds, or what really performed well, and so on. So, for example, this is why Asa is 10 points, because let's be honest, I mean, it's it's a very good ID that is very competitive and I just I'm trying by putting certain IDs higher on the point ranking I'm trying to push people away from them so that they actually you know that somebody makes a cool uh, I don't know like for example Saraswati Mnemonics it's a it's a deck that it's an ID that was very popular at some point in lockdown and I didn't put it at 10 or at 9 or 8 whatever it's at 6 because there's still cool things you can do about it, and I'm curious to see what people are gonna go for. Uh, Jemison, you know, again, another really cool ID that has its certain quirks and you have to know how to play it and so on and so forth. It might really influence your playstyle kind of outside of, it's kind of fast advance, but kind of extreme fast advance in a way. So uh, it's cheap because I'm curious to see if people just start coming up with some really cool ideas. Uh, and a lot of the 10 and 9 and 8 pointers are basically things that we keep seeing over and over and over and over again in standard tournaments. So while they're cool ideas and they're great to see and I'm happy that people enjoy them, I want to see less of them or as, as few of them as possible at lockdown. Not because I don't like them, it's just uh, Spice is the name of the game. So, you know, if, if somebody brings a kick-ass, uh, I don't know, uh, Cybernetics Division, for example, or Hyobo Institute or SSO, you know, that's that's a lot of fun. And, and seeing those decks is exciting. I think one of the big things about, for example, Ocarina was one of the big draws about that format where the IDs are completely kind of new, even though they kind of exist in the game. But it, it's just this ID meta meta game where you're like, oh, okay, so this could be an ID. And then the game suddenly changes because you have this ID, this, this ability built into, baked into your deck. So, you know, when Aesops can be your ID that cannot be trashed or taken away in any way, it's just your ability. It, the game just becomes completely different in a way for you as a runner. And in standard, we don't see this. I don't, again, I don't, I'm not as experimentative or experimental as, uh, let's say, Sanjay. And I, I cannot come up with cool new IDs or ideas around IDs, but I love the, the, 
different IDs we already have in standard, it's just that they don't get to see enough play, I think, because of the nature or, or the meta approach to standard and the, the IDs we have there. Uh, people are going to play the, the big names. And of course, each of the different corporation factions brings different play stats to the table, brings different challenges and, and, and solutions to them and so on. But yeah, if I sit down and I, if I sit down on the tournament of whatever scale, it could be even a GNK online, not a problem. But if I see somebody playing Titan, I'm like, ah, okay. So <laughs> there, there's very little surprising me in, in those big, or I guess anybody else, in those big decks, in those big ideas that we've seen over and over and over again, just tweaked a bit, you know, and then there's this one card missing, replaced with another card, okay. But the deck is 95% the same. Uh, whereas if you just say, hey, can you try and play an ID that you've never played before? People start coming up with some really cool ideas or really not working ideas, but it's fun. And I, I think fun is the name of the game here again. Yeah, I agree. I think um, at first it's a little bit uh, intimidating because you're used to play your, yeah, the best ID for NBN, asset spam, like CTM, and suddenly you're maybe maybe trying out Spark and stuff like that. I think at first it's intimidating, but then it's it's really exciting and it's really fun. And it suddenly, if you only change the identity and you keep a lot of the of the shell of the deck, it still feels so fresh and so exciting to play. And suddenly you might be playing against Silhouette. And uh, yeah, I, th and I love the idea that is that it is so rewarding to play an identity that is so underrepresented and that's exactly what all those low point identities for runner and corpse are they are just underrepresented because yeah they are just just worse than others that's that's just the truth and this really encourage you to play i don't know some something different you might not be used to but it's fun And people are really, really uh, playing those identities, as far as I have seen in the previous editions. They really, really use it, and um, yeah, and creating exciting games and fun. And they might not be the best, but yeah, you always have the chance to play some some shitty corp identity and play a good runner if you're scared to lose every game. I mean, exactly. You can always rely. You know, you can go for a, for a very well known ID, and of course, you may have to tweak your deck a big bit against the current ban list. But still, it's going to be pretty reliable, or it's easy or, or easy enough to just deck build around the restrictions. To still, okay, have ten points uh, in your IDs, and then have one deck which is going to very good and you're gonna be like yeah I don't even have to practice much with it because I know exactly what it does with some small tweaks but then the other deck is gonna be a challenge so I think the the balance here for me is to keep it challenging in a fun way where people will either have to push themselves on one side of the game so they will have to be experimental and daring with their runner or their corp or you know some people would just like yeah no I, I don't care I'm just gonna play the the IDs that I've never played before because I want to see if I can build a good deck out of the hundreds of cards we have out there and skip the banned ones and still come up with something that's going to surprise my opponents and this is what makes the games also very exciting like you just said because it's it's still Netrunner so still the, the game works exactly the same way it's just we see things that we haven't seen uh, that often or or well, maybe never because if somebody only follows let's say the competitive scene like you know the, the big tournaments and so on who the hell is going to you know come up with oh yeah of course like uh, uh where were we with this uh i mean any of the ideas that you have like you know on on uh, three two and one points it's like when was you know when was the last time you you saw i don't know harishandra entertainment or harmony medtech be you know competitive in any big way and here you can just say, yeah, of course, we're going to make this happen. And you're gonna, you can totally try it. And you may just have fun. And that's, that's the whole part of it. Like, that's, that's the whole idea behind it. Just don't worry about your score. You're going to play four rounds of Swiss. 
And after the four rounds of Swiss, might as well call it a day and enjoy what you did with the deck. And it's going to be a lesson in a way for you and your opponent in deck building and playing the basics. Because runs will still be runs and clicks will still be clicks. But there will be some cards popping up that will be exciting and fun for everybody because you haven't seen them in a long time or never. And you can really also, you can play with success. You might be even able to, to win the tournament. You go first place and you are unbeaten the whole day with your decks you never would be able that that they will ever perform well. And yeah, I had a Yubo deck which was uh, winning all games in the tournament. It was pretty fun. <laughs> and I, I think that that is really feeling very rewarding. If you have such an underrepresented identity, yeah, well, if you win with tight and fast advance, yeah, that also might be exciting and cool, but not as exciting and as cool if you, example, win the same with Jamison. That's also true for your opponent, because not only you profit from your underrepresented identity, but also your opponent, because he is playing against you and might also haven't played against Jamison since a year or maybe two, and is also happy because he's saying, hey, cool, you're a Jamison, let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly. I, I I don't know if you followed or you probably competed as well. I mean we had the there was the intercontinent the continental tournaments and the intercontinental championship, right? Like it was a month full of really kind of high stakes and fun and exciting standard meta net runner with really like the top players from everywhere. Like everybody was invited to, to perform and we got to see a lot of people uh, coming up with you know uh, different strategies different ideas and so on but the meta was largely kind of known in a way it was more like seeing uh, it was trying like, it was trying to see who's going to perform the best with the decks we already knew or we learned how to play over a long period of time and there were some tweaks uh, to the meta as well but in general it was largely standard with a lot of different playstyles and people trying to surprise each other with some unexpected choices or some unexpected picks but then uh, in the end there was a, I think it was just you know the, the, the top games were a lot of titan versus whoever made it to the top and there were of course there was uh, Hoshiko there was a lot of different IDs that are quite popular uh, and each and every of those continental championships, uh, I'm not saying they look the same, but it was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, so this is, you know, the, the the usual suspects are pam, 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 and there was like, okay, yeah, this is, and it was not about the players, it was about the IDs, and it was fun to watch, and it was exciting, it was fun, because the games were brilliant, of course, but it, at some point, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I'm seeing this ID versus that ID again, uh, okay, so the game can go in like this way, that way, the other way, the other way, and we'll just see what, what happens wasn't boring at all but it was um, I don't know I'm trying to find a word right now it's kind of hard to find a word this late but <laughs> not predictable but kind of almost predictable in a way and I think taking away that predictability is what makes the game exciting again in a way for me a bit more because you just have to adapt and that challenging part is what's exciting for people trying to adapt. So it's, you know, it's a very, very cool feedback loop because limiting people's choices makes them happy. Uh, oh, that sounds like a terrible political line, never mind. <laughs> limiting people's choices in the game <laughs> makes, them, makes them happy to compete. And that makes the organizers happy to organize because then there's a good feedback loop with the people who are having fun with the tournament. So, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's a different kind of challenge if you have kind of a predictable meta, which is mostly standard, and you can find yourself challenging, beating those top decks at the moment. But I think a lot of the alternative formats uh, shifting away from that idea, from the prediction to go to totally unpredictable, which is also each one has its charm. It, there, it, um, there is. Mm, not one is better than the other. Each, each. I think we need both. I think we need, we need power gaming. We need um, 
the best decks and the best runners and the best stable cards, but we also need some alternative to, to have a healthy community, I think. Both is very needed and both is very fun. I also watched all of the Continentals, Intercontinentals, every big tournament and I also really enjoy it, but I also really enjoy if I see something different. It's not like it's opposing, I think it's uh, complementary to each other. It's le at yep. least that's was what I am feeling. So this as a whole, this is Netrunner for me. Very well put, I think. Okay, any other opinions about the ID points? Yes, I can remember uh, back on Locked On 7 where we had four Apex and I think Apex was zero points. I'm just looking it up at the moment. Yeah, there was yeah, an Apex I remember Apex zero there. points. It, four people playing Apex it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I Apex really wish, <laughs> yeah, I, I really wish the many factions had, you know, a better time in the standard game, and no scoops, no spoilers, but there are certain things in the works that me say about many factions, I think, that are going to be quite exciting when they appear in the future, I don't know when, no scoops. but, you yeah, know, it's, the minor scoop is basically... There are some people who feel similarly about many factions, like, okay, they, they do exist in the game and they are easily ident identifiable. Like, everybody has tried to play Apex, Adam, and, and uh, Sunny, and they do play differently, they do expand the game in different ways, and it would be kind of hard to imagine a whole faction based on Apex, like, you know, like, uh, what, the rogue AIs, or, you know, or uh, runaway bioroids as a, as a certain, a separate thing, or, like, uh, corporate employees who actually sometimes become hackers because whatever. It doesn't make sense, so the idea of many factions is really cool. I, you know, I, at some point I thought, like, yeah, Netrunner will actually be every single ID will have its own color in a way and then you will be able to put some other cards but that will be a totally different building experience of the game as well I get the design I guess so the way that we have kind of three big factions on the runner side and four big factions on the corp side makes perfect sense and it, it just has a lot of flavor in itself too but I would really love to see some more cool Apex decks, and it's kind of yeah. hard because 25, you know, maybe they should have, I don't know, 35 influence I don't know, or something. I don't know. It would yes. be really cool to see more variety, more Apex cards, more uh, or more mini faction cards that make the game more fun because they're not just your, let's say, uh, great, but kind of again predictable almost but not really like uh, anarch criminal or shaper cards so anyway no more talking about this because i just hope that people are going to play apex on lockdown and win because it's a really cool idea <laughs> yeah i think apex is so interesting and like you said everybody was trying to make apex work everybody of us and everybody was failing but i think it just lead, needs a little bit more a little bit love for each each of the mini factions to make them really really cool and really good i like the approach of was it fantasy fly games in the end where they were bringing or was this already nisei when they were bringing uh, a few cards for them i think nisei brought a few but fantasy fly games also and they were pushing uh, suddenly uh, the factions uh, a lot. This were only a little bit of support cards and suddenly there were so much more fun and so much more played and so much more uh, also playable or viable. I hope yeah, this, this will yeah. keep on going. Yeah, and I was a little bit scared that maybe they, they will die at one point because they won't get any support anymore. But I think that would be a waste of potential because I think people generally like the mini factions. Yeah, I guess one of the things, you know, I, again, I'm not a game designer. I have no idea yeah, about balance. I have no idea about points or anything. But in my heart, you know, my emotions tell me, like, for example, if there was an Apex 2.0 or an Adam 2.0 or a Sunny 2.0 with the uh, same cards and whatnot, but let's say 35 influence, I don't know if that would be broken, but it would probably open a few more options for those IDs to just experiment with because there's only so much influence you can put into a deck anyway 
and if you don't get any extra cards uh, for your own faction then yeah you have to you have to play with other you have to play with influence points i mean that's that's the whole point of having 25 in the base ids anyway but i think 10 more wouldn't break the game it would make it interesting as well like you could have probably completely different builds maybe this is an idea for somebody who's going to run a mini faction tournament where uh, you can only play the mini factions as runners and they have i don't know 40 influence each and then the corpse can be whatever you want but it's all about the mini factions i don't i don't know like <laughs> mini factions for corpse that's another cool idea uh, yeah 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 well, well people people were were predicting it back back in the day when data and destiny hit and they were saying where are the mini faction corps where is the <laughs> the mining corp and where is my security force and stuff like that and uh, maybe yeah. maybe one day one day Okay, so guys, to come to a little bit of conclusion, I love the dis discussion, but uh, at one point we need to cut the video because I don't want to go to three hours. I would love to talk about <laughs> uh, about this free for three hours. Just one last question to everybody of you. If you would be new to the lockdown format or new to Netrunner in general and you want to attend at a lockdown tournament, is there any tips, any any anything you would uh, tell the people to to provide mistake or anything you would say the best approach for lockdown is this and this and it's easiest to build your deck like this is there anything you would would tell the people i would say uh, lockdown is really good if you want to try some deck building because you can come up with some strange ideas and you will not just be beaten to death by really good design decks like you're gonna have a chance with the uh, not the perfect deck in the format just take some lower pointed ideas and build a deck based around just this id for example cybernetics with just doing damage with traps and putting brain damage out and it will work and they more or less will work in the end of the standard format too so you just have to build a deck for a lockdown that's easier a little bit because some power cards are out for, uh, for the for your enemies let's say it that way and then you can upgrade it for standard and have more fun with it I also, yeah i would uh, just uh, sorry sorry oh, yeah, sorry I'm, I, I'm coming in sorry you want to go i just have one advice because i was saying tip i'm sorry of course german is tip for advice i wanted to to ask for advice so my advice is don't go to 10 points if i learned one from the previous lockdowns don't don't use all your id score points go lower than 10 you will absolutely <clears throat> need the primary tiebreaker this will help you a lot And so, yeah, Vesper, you were uh, um, observing all all previous 10 lockdown tournaments. Is there anything you would say? What what do you think is the best approach for for um, uh, lockdown? I would just say uh, definitely build to have fun rather than to win. Uh, experiment because that's the whole idea of the, of the whole format in general. And uh, play in more than one because not because i'm running it it's more like if you like to have fun with the game this is probably one of the kind of nicest corners of the game where you can just have plainly fun and nobody's going to judge your ideas or nobody's going to uh, like pe people around lockdown who keep playing over and over again you know it's kind of like they're really engaged in this whole experimental laboratory almost kind of Uh, experience or this kind of atmosphere and everything and everything is that is legal in the in the current edition is fun and anything is fair you know if you come up with some some really weird deck that nobody could see coming even though it makes perfect sense that's great you you, you know you you looked at it from a different perspective and that's really fun so creativity and fun definitely encourage just bring that to the table and have fun that's it 
Okay, cool. Then I would say thank you all for joining me. This was a very interesting uh, two hours. So and, and if, if anybody is still listening, thank you for listening. <laughs> and I hope to see you on Sunday. If you're really interested and not sure if you want to play it lockdown, really try it yourself. It's really fun. And I hope I see all of you on uh, Sunday, at least Armin and Fire, uh, Armin Firecracker and Dunch. I hope you managed to play on Sunday. Vespa, I'm quite, quite sure you will be there on Sunday, <laughs> at least I suppose. <laughs> and if I'm not there, then yeah, well, uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah, thank I'm, you I'm for, for for joining me. And um, yeah, anything anybody want to, to 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 some some closing words? Just very quickly, I will leave you with the closing words. But like super super big thanks for making this happen. And I hope that Rosenheim City Grid will keep producing content because it's always great to have more content from more people. Thank you, of course, of course. Obviously, we will we will keep on going. Okay, thank so thank you all. Thank you, Dunch. Thank you, Armin. Thank you, especially Vespa, for joining us and so giving us some first hand information. That was very cool. I'm really looking forward for Sunday. What kind of decks will show up? Or what? How good were our predictions? And uh, who will take the top table? And what is coming up on lockdown number 12. So thank you everybody for listening and the most important thing is stay safe and have fun. Bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.